Hey, greetings and thanks for joining me here on the Do Business Better podcast. It's you, and you know who it is. I don't even need to say it. It's Damian Mason, because you just heard that in the introduction. Got a great show for you today, because I've got a great friend at, on the show who's going to give you input and ideas and a great story about starting his own business at age 25. He and I have that in common. We have much in common, because my guest is one of my best friends of all time. He and I went to kindergarten together. That's right. His name is Louis Michael Stoffel. Uh, I call him Lou. Uh, a lot of times professionally, they call him Mike. You can call him whatever you want. Uh, he is a self-made guy who has a landscaping business, has for over 25 years, started out after a couple years of working in the professional world and said, wait a minute, I'm going to go back to something I did when I was putting myself through college. I'm going to go back to creating beautiful landscapes for people. He is a design guy. He's an educated guy who brings all that element to then his farm boy work ethic and has created the business. Lou, thanks for being here. Hi, Daniel. It's great to be here. All right. So I gave your background. I remember distinctly we were going, we went rabbit hunting uh, and it was 1994 or five. Help me out here. We were rabbit hunting and you said, Hey, I think I'm going to start uh, my own landscaping business. And you said you had just started doing your thing, becoming a comedian. Uh, man, I, there's going to be some things I probably will ask you about, but I'm looking at doing this. Boom, boom, boom. Take me back there. What was it, 1994 or five? Yeah, I think it was 1994. It was a great time. You're, um, you know, I'm out in the workforce doing what I went to school for for about three years. And I probably one thing that got me really thinking was I had done this through high school and college, and I was still able to do it some on the side um, on some weekends and. I could, I could make, even though at that time I wasn't doing it for larger clientele or, or, you know, commercial or, or even for a builder, I was just doing some things on the, you know, when I had free time and I thought, you know, I, I think I enjoy this better. I think there's a lot more potential for income. And of course the obvious, I think anyone would say that it, it is certainly a lot more fulfilling to say you're working for yourself. Okay, so there's there's the first thing. People always come to you. They come to me. Obviously, we're buddies. We we we've known each other for almost fifty years, and um, they say things like, "I've got this idea. I've got this idea." And you and I both are of the same opinion. Like, hey, ideas are great. That's fantastic. You know, your business is more creative than most people would realize. You can go and look at a, a barren uh, home site, and you can envision and design what it can look like. There's a creative thing there, which means you're good with the idea, but it wasn't just idea that made you have this, uh, this, you know, business. It was something else. So was it income fulfillment? Uh, you didn't like your job. What's the reason? There's a number of, of reasons. I liked my job. I think, um, some of the jobs, some of the, some of the venues, uh, this, the one that I was in was probably not going to be a great chance for, for career advancement at that time. So I looked at, I, I, you know, I had a background and, you know, since I was a kid, I loved to draw, design, um, work with plans, come up with uh, something new. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, how you decide what you're going to you know, do for a living. But I think having the background of working in the field and, you know, the funny thing was in high school and college, I worked for a guy and I told him every day, the reason I'm going to college is so I don't have to do this for a living, <laughs> you know, so I don't have to, you know, go out and break my back. But it's different now when you're, you know, you're not the young kid anymore, so you can kind of manage that whole thing. Yeah. But, hey, by the way, remember, keep that microphone close to your mouth because you're still okay. you're still a little bit hard to hear. OK, so there is a little bit of the fulfillment. There's a little bit of the freedom. You didn't necessarily hate your job, but you decided, hey, I think I can do better uh, doing this on my own. Uh, the work never scared you. You've been a worker since you were a kid, uh, farm boy, et cetera. What surprised you in your first year? Well, I, I think the, the hard part about going into business for yourself is that you, you need a lot of um, support, a lot of other factors. You know, I, I, one thing I realized right away is that I can go out and I can get all the work I want. It happens pretty quickly. 
but I need help to get these jobs done. So I, you know, in my field, different than yours, I, I, I really need to have some good employees. And at first it was just some part-time, you know, maybe it wasn't their full-time job. Some guys helped me on weekends, uh, you know, a few days a week here and there. And then, you know, it took a little bit of time, but after, after a few years, I never really wanted to get big. I never wanted to be, you know, a huge company with all of the headaches and, and always on the road, always on the phone till 10 at night. I just wanted to be a nice sized, small landscape company. And uh, yeah, the, the, the difficult part for me is always just making sure that I have the right amount of, uh, you know, guys helping me and, and that, you know, you're not trying to take on too much or, you know, I guess the, there's never too little, but right now the way the way the economy has been you know up until this hiccup you know, anybody could be doing this with some experience uh, there there is way more demand landscaping has changed a lot since even since we were little kids but think about it, it's a relatively new type of industry compared to other trades like you know framing or concrete i mean landscaping really has only been around for as a as a real heavy profession, probably for sixty or seventy years, you know, it wasn't something that was around really a hundred years ago. No, I don't think a hundred years ago. Well, I guess when I think about you, watch an old movie from the nineteen twenties or thirties. Uh, the the beautiful manor, the the very nice uh, uh, homes. Um, they had a professional gardener. They had an employee that went out with the you know with the <laughs> head, head whackers. And I don't know if a lot of average folks uh, certainly didn't have a professional landscaper come in and design their their hardscape and their landscape and their portico, uh, sorry, their pergolas and um, you know backyard man space and she sheds and uh, outdoor kitchens and all that. So it's it's a luxury item in that regard. But then again, as I point out, almost all of us sell that which is unnecessary. You know, uh, and people don't like to hear that. What are you talking about? I'm like, your business probably isn't necessary. Um, you, you know, you, you can live without a swimming pool. You can live without uh, a sixty thousand dollar automobile. You can live without um, uh, what I offer, which is uh, you know business uh, business presentations at corporate events. You can live without landscaping, but that doesn't mean that it's not still a great business. It just means that it's non-essential. But most of us sell that which is unnecessary. You said selling's not been the problem, though. You said that there's plenty of business. Your biggest problem has been getting employees. Is there really? Is it really that easy to sell your business? Well, I think the business in general. It's just like you were talking about earlier years ago. It was so small scale. Now, I mean, landscaping is required everywhere. Commercial. Uh, you have to have so much of a percentage of your your land dedicated to landscaping and residential. It's just you know it's just one of those things like you don't have to go out and enjoy a, a dinner out in movies, but we we do. And 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 if it's something that you really enjoy, and there there are people that don't care for landscaping at all. There there is a, a portion. There is always that portion, but there are a whole lot of people that want a lot of landscaping done. And it's the equipment that you use and, and the methods and the, just the experience. It, you know, you really have to hire someone to do it. Not very many people can do that on their own nowadays. So. Yeah. So, okay. We talked about the biggest, the biggest lesson or biggest surprise, I guess, in the first year uh, you said was that it wasn't a problem to get the work. It was a problem to get the employees. Okay. Other lessons you learned uh, dealing with customers and clients. Uh, you have no problem doing the work. What what have you learned about dealing with clientele? Well, I, you you kind of after so many years, you know, I've I've met a lot of people. I've learned a lot of great things from uh, these customers. You have a base of, of just all of these people that you've worked with, and you know them on a first name basis. Um, one philosophy we've all heard when it comes to business is that the customer is always right. I think I've always taken the, the, the attitude, the customer is not necessarily always right. It's my job to be right. So, you know, I, after 26 years of doing this, I've, I've developed a lot of, a lot of skill over the years of, of, and a lot of experiences 
on how to efficiently, you know, landscape a home or or a business. And you know, I've had customers ask me, "Well, hey, can you put an orange tree in my yard?" Uh, they uh, people tell me how to make water drain from their house. Uh, all kinds of little things, and I think the customer is always right is is an important part of the you know maybe the restaurant business, but you know I I think anybody that does this for an extended after after so many years of doing this I think you need to have them have the mindset that you you know you're growing at this and you're learning and you're you're, you're gaining a lot of experience and it's. It's really your job to make sure. So if I if I have a customer who you know asks me to put the orange trees in their yard, I'm probably not going to. They're not going to be my customers because I you know I just I just you have the ability to to kind of pick and choose when there's that much work out there. Uh, I find it interesting that you're saying. Um, okay, and by the way, somehow if you've forgotten, dear listener, I'm talking to my buddy Lou. Uh, he's a landscape uh, business guy and. Uh, and, he, and he and I have known each other since we were in kindergarten. He picked me to help him hand out cookies in kindergarten. We've been friends ever since. Went through first community together, uh, wrestled together, played football together, bailed hay together. We've got a lot of history. And, uh, and he's been at it for 26 years. So he just brings up an interesting point. I know it's the old, uh, it's the old statement we've all heard. The customer is always right. I agree with you when you said, actually, it's your job to be right. You're the one that has got a college degree. You know about design. You can look at a set of drawings and say, here's what's going to really do this. You don't even necessarily need the set of drawings. You can probably look at a, a half acre uh, building site and say, here's how I can make this look beautiful. And you probably have a better handle on that than any of your customers, unless your customers are professional landscape architects. I agree with you. The customer is not always right. I have probably taken it, and this is through maturity. Uh, it took me a little while because I used to be more hot-headed, as you well know. I'm not of the opinion that the customer is always right. I'm of the opinion that the customer is uh, who I'm working for, and we all work for other people's money. So I try now to make sure, not try, I do, um, because there's no such thing as try. I say, hey, listen, they say, well, we were thinking we should do it this way for our conference. Um, what do you think? They say, well, it's your conference, it's your money, and I'm the hired hand. You're going to put me on a stage. But you just said you were wondering if you should have me uh, do this during dinner. Let me tell you something. People can either eat or pay attention. They can't do both. <laughs> and so I've kind of learned, Lou, that I now go through this whole thing and say, Listen, you're the customer, you're my client, I work for you, I'll do whatever you want because you pay me to do it. But I gotta tell you, based on my 26 years of experience, here's how it's gonna work a lot better. And then as you said, if after that dialogue, they still say, well, since I'm the one that's paying for it, and I'm the one that's right, I want you to plant the orange trees in Northern Indiana, you're gonna say, maybe we just shouldn't do business together. Sure, and don't get me wrong, it's not about being big headed or anything like that, it's just, if, if you can help a customer, if you can help a client learn something and better themselves through your experiences, and I've also, I've learned a lot from my customers through the years too. That's, that's the nature of, of you know, interacting and, and, uh, and working. But, but I, I think you have to take it on yourself to say, hey, you know, you're continually learning. You're continually perfecting your craft. And I, I truly believe I've probably gotten better business or more business through all of this because if I do correct a customer or, or if, I, if I do use my experience to say, hey, this is, this is the best way to you know, enjoy what you want to try to do here, to, to correctly correct a problem, then they're going to you know, kind of come to grips with it and, and understand and, and they're going to pass that on. So that it reflects well on you. So one thing that I guess, really, yeah, when you talk about the this, uh, and I do this as a customer myself, I already engaged with, say, the Lou landscaper for a reason, and then I'll say, hey, I don't need to be right. I want it to be right, and that takes a lot of customers don't have that um, uh, ability to be more humble. But I'll say, listen, I'm, it's not about me being right. I've done a little research. 
whatever, in any way that I'm a customer, say, hey, I've done a little research, but I'm also not one of these guys going to tell you your business. Here's what I have learned. Here's why I think needs to be done. You tell me your approach. And then you throw it back on the professional. And that's how, I guess, having been a service provider for 26 years has taught me to be that way. Maybe that's your approach, too, is like, hey, we can, we can put those orange trees out here, but you live in northern Indiana. It ain't going to do you any good. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know that I could get orange trees up here, but I, it, it's things of that nature that, um, you know, I, I think one of our other friends that was on one of your podcasts earlier said that he wants to try to drop 10% of his customers. It's not anything. It has nothing to do with being rude. It's about making your business what you want it to be. And I, you know, I, after 26 years of doing this, I want to have the right customer. But I mean, it'd be, you know, when I started, obviously I took on any job. My first year I took on whatever job and some of them were, you know, were not jobs that I would do now. Um, but I, I, I learned from that. And now, now I, I think through the years, I always, early on, especially I wanted to be a, a contractor that helped the average guy. You know, I just, somebody who didn't want to go rent a tractor or, talk to a nursery professional about how to best implement what I, you know, I just, I, I just wanted to be somebody who could help the average guy. I didn't want to go high end, uh, you know, but now after so many years, it's kind of like, you know, I've done this long enough. Now I just want to have good customers. So, yeah. you know, that maybe the younger guys can take the ones that want the orange trees. Well, yeah, there's, there's no question. We all work for other people and there is a challenge that sometimes you're doing the you're doing your clientele sometimes you you've got some clients that you you're not enamored with uh you're you know and it's not even like you said that particular individual it's just like for me frankly it's not out of arrogance it's not out of um being unhappy five years from now i don't want to go to difficult to get to destinations that require a two hour drive in February in Alberta. <laughs> sure. And it's not because I've, I have a problem with the people that I've worked for in Alberta. It's because I just don't enjoy it and I don't want to do it five years from now. That's one of my plans. So it's kind of some of the things being in a position where you can grow out of some of the business that you currently are doing, not because you even hate it, just because it's not. You put you the years in and you know, you, you burned it. You've earned the ability to, to kind of be a little choosier. Dead on. All right. Here's my next uh, couple of rapid fire questions for you. Uh, best habit that you think has served you to create your 26 year landscaping business? Uh, probably just the work ethic. Uh, something we both, we had very similar childhood. And, um, growing up on the farm, that, you know, we had to do a lot of stuff that today machines do. We had to do a lot of stuff uh, a lot less efficiently. So you learn how to try to be efficient um, on in everything you do as much as you can. So in order to do any any type of construction related, whether it's concrete, uh, roofing, framing, excavation, you have to be you have to be pretty you know, self motivated and a hard worker. So that's I think that's one one thing that's helped me a lot through the years. Because well, you know, that has to go off. That has to come off onto your employees, everyone else that you're associated with too. Yeah, when you've got six employees out there working on a couple of different jobs, and they think that you're just, uh, you know, not motivated, and then, then of course there, uh, there's a, so we say, a nonverbal dynamic there. They sort of uh, cue from. All right, you called that a habit, which is my book, Do Business Better. Which, dear listener, uh, you know you can buy at DamianMason.com or you can buy it on Amazon if you have me watching, because now the Do Business Better podcast is both audio on your favorite podcast format. It's also a playlist at D Mason Comedy. That's my YouTube channel. I'm holding up a copy of Do Business Better right now, and my friend Louie has actually read this book, Lou. I call uh, work ethic actually a trait. You call it a habit. Uh, do you have any bad habits that you've got to work around or any bad traits? You know, I'll give you mine. Uh, I tend to get overwhelmed. You know, that's, that's something I have had to manage a little bit. Um, and I, um, I tend to maybe take on too many things. And that's, that makes me more overwhelmed because I think, okay, here's something I should be doing. Here's something I should be doing. What thing do you have to manage? Yeah, I mean, I think that that comes 
to everyone. You know, you, you that's what you really have to you have to kind of take the time to look at and say, how can you how can you get better at this? Um, one thing we can, you know, I could easily say I, each each winter I take some time away. I like to get away from the, the work, and as we get older, I probably don't keep in as good a shape as we did in high school. So you know, that a bad habit I have is definitely taking the time to make sure because you know to do to do your job well you have to I, you don't see too many people who are terribly out of shape so i'm not quite there yet but that's something i definitely i've, I've definitely let slide and then also like you uh just management of time and, and it's really hard for me to meet with every customer so that's where uh, you know i i try i, I don't want to you know i don't want to come home at seven at night and then go meet with somebody so you you know, I try to schedule that for say a Saturday or Sunday, and it's just it's really hard to keep all that together. Uh, okay, business plans. You know my thoughts on that because we're good buddies. You don't necessarily have a business plan, but you said earlier you didn't ever want to be too big because uh, you know you just you had an idea, a vision of what you wanted your business to look like. Um, are you there? I mean, is is this the vision? I mean, are you doing today what you envisioned back in those early days? Yeah, it, it evolves. I mean, I think I was a lot more hands-on back then. I still am mostly hands-on, but where I would be changing, I think, at this point in my life, uh, is that I need to really become more of a manager of the business. Um, and as far as the day-to-day -day operations, that that has to that has to kind of change over the next five to ten years. Um, I, I still would be out designing, looking at jobs, uh, running materials, whatever, but it's not a good use of my experience now after this many years of doing it for me to be, you know. On the end of a rake. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, mistakes. Uh, I can admit I've made a few, more than a few. Uh, any mistake you'll own up to and then the lesson you got from it. Uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of great great employees over the years, and that you, you you know one mistake I made early on again probably I don't do it as much now uh, is you have to really get a good feel for who's gonna who, who's gonna buy in and be a part of your company. Back then, I would hire kids. That one big mistake would always be if I listen to a parent come up to me and say, "Hey, my kid really wants." To would like to work for you and mm -hmm. he really wants to learn this he wants to learn how to work um and you know occasionally that worked out but for the most part if, if it's somebody else wanting that person to have a good job what uh, that that's not going to probably result in a good employee that so i you know i learned through the years i'm only going to talk to kids or, or a young person that who they really want the job or they're they're a Somebody else is trying to get you a job. You, know, you probably don't want the job, <laughs> or you're not going to uh, perform at it. Yeah, and I talk about that in my book that uh, we have that on the farm. Hey, you know what? You got that farm. My, my my kid really needs to learn a work ethic. So, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why don't you Why don't you do that? Uh, you're the parent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking to my good friend Lou, and he's got a landscaping business called uh, Golden Horizons. And he has been at it for 26 years and he's given you a lot of his lessons and things he's learned. I think I'm going to have him back on the show and we can sit down face to face, maybe in his shop, because that'd be a great place to do this. We can cover a lot of other things. But before we go, one piece of advice, you know, we're heading, uh, we're heading into summer, spring. Uh, you know, everybody's going to be excited. You're, yes, yeah, when your business ramps up, uh, what's, what's something, you know, give them something, give them a little a bulb, give them a little seedling, give them something to be excited about. What's a piece of advice for anybody in any level of business, whether they're starting out, whether they've been in it for 20 years, what's your piece of advice? Well, I thought about this a little bit, I suppose, uh, being in the, in this business, I have a lot of other contractors that I, you know, you just become good friends with and you, you, you kind of bounce ideas off of each other and you hear some of their experiences. One thing I would tell anyone listening, if, if you're, if we all need to hire a contractor for something or another, whether it's just to simply paint or if we really, if we want a large patio installed, um, if, if it's adding on a room. Um, I would say 
you know, to make make sure that you that you that you really put an effort into getting to getting to know if, if you if you have some friends that know of a contractor, but you know, don't don't just take tons of quotes and go with the lowest quote. Just try to get to know the person and um, use the experiences of your friends, neighbors, and uh, you know. If you have a good one, just if you have a good contractor or somebody that you want to use, then then pass that on and make it you know a word of mouth thing and not you know not just go with whatever seems. You know. I like it. So the point is, low bid. Uh, as I've learned, you've learned, and in business or in your personal life. Uh, I've saved a hundred dollars before on something and it cost me a thousand. So <laughs> that's really the answer right there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The word of mouth concept. And just, if you, if you know somebody that is good, that's all you, you know, that's all you really need. You, you can trust them and you don't have to, you know, say that you're going to look for several other bids or anything like that. Just, uh, just and let them do, let let them meet with them, talk to them, let them do the job, and you know, give them the space to do the job, and uh, you know, trust that if they're professionals, they're going to take care of them. Right? His name is Lewis Michael Stoffel. We call him Louie. His other people that don't know him well call him Mike. You can call him whatever you want. If you're really bored, you can look him up. He doesn't do a lot of social media. You can always find him through me if you actually have a need. He's in northern Indiana. He's also one of my bestest friends since kindergarten. Thanks for being on here, man. You're welcome. It was great to be here, Danny. I think we can do this again. we got plenty of other topics we can cover. Hey, thanks for joining us. Till next time, remember, check it out on the YouTube channel as well as your favorite podcast forum, uh, format. Uh, and until next time, it's the Do Business Better podcast.